All right, everybody, I'm back here with another video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, that way you know I post a new video. But otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Now, this video is addressed to Leon Washington. But not only him, but all the others out there who have, who have trouble with the subject I'm about to talk about today. Now, what we're gonna talk about is some scriptures that he gave um, just recently and this is all about who's coming back and who's judging so that's what we're going to talk about and maybe I could help Leon if he believes the word of God or if you believe the word of God but in order for you to accept what I'm about to say or teach you're going to have to be a believer of the word if you don't believe what the word say then you're wasting your time even reading the word just so you could come to your own understanding. You got to believe what's written because these people that read it, they wrote it. They know what they talking about. They were there. You wasn't. All right. Now, what I want to do is look, I'm going to show these scriptures that Leon gave. Now, I want to address those scriptures there. So what I want to do, let's start off. He gave Psalms chapter um, Psalms chapter 100, and let's read verse 3. And see, the thing is, he's one of those oneness believers, right, Leon? <laughs> you one of those oneness believers who got a problem with the Son of God. You got a problem with him. But you know, I defend him. Now, let's address these scriptures that you gave. And maybe we could come to an understanding and maybe you will understand. But if you don't belong to Jesus Christ, the son of God, you ain't going to understand. But anyways, Psalm chapter 100. Let's look at verse three. He gave that. It says, know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. OK, the Lord, he is God. I agree with all the what uh, what is said here. All right. Now let's look at Psalms 98. Let's look at verse nine. The Lord is God. I agree. All right. Psalms 98 nine, which says, "Before the Lord, for He cometh to judge the earth with righteousness, shall He judge the world and the people with equity." So now we talking about this same thing. Who's judging and who's coming? All right. Now the Bible says in nine, Psalms ninety-eight nine, He says, "Before the Lord, He says, for He cometh to judge the earth with righteousness. Shall He judge the world and the people with equity?" So it says here that the Lord in King James to give all capital letters L O R D, so that let you know it's talking about God the Father. So He says that. He coming to judge the earth with righteousness shall he judge. All right. All right. So God is coming to judge the earth. Okay. And it says that and he's going to uh, he's coming and he's going to be the judge. All right. So let's let's keep on going to the other scriptures. Now, remember that. Remember that. Remember the Psalms 98, 9. All right. Now, he gave Psalms 118 verse 27. I'm going to go back to the one in Hebrew, but let's go to uh, Psalms 118. And verse number 27, and that says, God is the Lord, which had showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. So God is the Lord. That's true. God is the Lord. Understand where you're reading from. You are, you know what? I'm going to come back to that. Psalm 75. Psalm 75. Psalm chapter 75. Let's look at verse 7. And it says, But God is the judge. He put it down one and set it up another. <laughs> and then let's go to Psalm chapter 50. Let's look at verse 1. In verse six, he says, the mighty God, even the Lord had spoken and called the earth 
from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. And then verse 6, And the heaven shall declare his righteousness, for God is judge himself. God is judge himself. Selah. So I agree that God is the Lord. So when we talk about the son of God, when we talk about the son of God, now this same God that is Lord, that is talking about in the book of Psalms, the, the Bible says that God, when the fullness of time come, God sent forth his son. All right. So the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he had declared him. So now this God, that is the Lord. The Bible says that he has an only begotten son. Now, the Bible says that he inherited all things of his father. Now. The Bible says that God made that same Jesus who you crucified. He made him what? Both Lord and Christ. So God made his only begotten son, Lord. So when you look at what Paul said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and when you look at Let's see, uh, verse number, let's look at verse three. It says, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Now you look at Romans chapter one and we look at verse number, verse number three. It says concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And then it lets you know which is, which was made. Now, this is the Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paul go on to define Jesus Christ, our Lord, which he says, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. So the seed of David, or which comes from the seed of David is, is Jesus Christ our Lord. So God the Father is Lord and he made his son Lord. Now, when you look at the book of Jude chapter 1 and you look at verse 4, it says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jude says that they denied the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a comma after Lord God let you know this is a separate one. This is a separate Lord. It says, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So God the Father is our Lord and Jesus Christ is our Lord. Now, let's go to Hebrews 10 verse 30. He gave that scripture. Hebrews 10, let's look at verse number 30, and it says, For whom, wait, for we know him that had said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Now, that's a reference to the book of Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 32 around verse 35 and 36, where it's referencing God the Father as being the Lord that would judge his people. So in the Old Testament, God the Father is called Lord. 
in the Old Testament, the prophets and the people then, they um, reference God the Father as being Lord. He is the Lord. He is God. He is referenced as um, Lord. <clears throat> and he's also referenced as being God. Okay? So that's why when you see in Jude, he referenced God the Father as being saying that they denied the only Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ because he knew because he is a witness because he understood that God the Father is our Lord God and he knew that Jesus Christ the only begotten Son is our Lord Jesus Christ he know that the problem is you don't know and the problem is <clears throat> many people today, including preachers, don't know when it's written, but you won't believe what's written because you have a problem with the son of God. You got the problem. You have a problem with the son of man. The problem is you don't accept him when he said in John 14, 1, he says, you believe in God, believe also in me. But you got a problem with believing in him. You ain't got no problem with God the Father. Just like Saul did. He didn't have a problem with God the Father. He had a problem with that Jesus. See, y'all want to believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the Father. When he himself never taught that. He always said he was the son of the father as well as the apostles. They said he was the son of the father. They know what they talking about. You don't know what you talking about because you wasn't there. You was taught by some man in the 21st century. That man wasn't there. So he don't know what he talking about. He's speaking contrary to the word of God. Now, you gave the scripture Jeremiah 23 verse 21 Jeremiah so you said Jeremiah 23 21 I have not sent these prophets yet they ran I have not spoken to them yet they prophesied okay what's that talking about do you know what he's talking about he's dealing with the prophets then that went prophesying and God didn't send them. Now that happens today. I agree. But because one man believes in the son of God, the one you got a problem with, it don't mean that this man is a false prophet and, and you trying to reference God not sending that man. In that case, God didn't send Paul. In that case, God did not send all the other apostles that testified of the son of God. John. Peter. Do I need to keep going? Jude there. I mean. You trying to say all them false prophets then. Now let's keep going. Now. Ask yourself this. Who is the son of man? Is the father the son of man? Or is the son of God the son of man? Matter of fact, can the father be the son of man? I believe the Bible says God sent his own son. He sent his son. So it's either you're going to believe the scripture or you're not going to believe the scriptures. The Bible says in John 3, 16, you should know it. Everybody know it. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. The Bible says in 1 John 4, 14, for God sent the son to be the savior of the world. What's so hard believing it? Why is that so hard to believe? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe it in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You don't want everlasting life? Why can't you believe in the son that God gave? 
Why can't you just believe in him? The son said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. You deny him, he going to deny you before his father in heaven. That's what he said. If you deny him before men, he's going to deny you before his father in heaven. Look at what Jesus says. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father in heaven. Do you want access denied to the kingdom of God? Is that what you want? Access denied? In the book of Luke chapter 21. Luke 21 verse 27. The son of man. Who is the son of God. The only begotten son that the father sent to be the savior of the world. He said this. Luke 21 27. And then shall they see. Now he's talking about in the end times. If you go read the context. After great tribulation. He says. And then. Shall they see the son of man. And then shall they see. The son of man. And then. Shall they see. The son of man. Coming in a cloud with power in great glory. Okay. Matthew says then he's going to send the angels to gather his elect. Matthew 24. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Ask yourself, who died? Would, did the father come down here and die? Was that the father that died on the cross? Or was that the father's son that died on the cross? 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 20. Uh, let's see. Verse 26. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Who, is the, who died? Who, who suffered death? Was it not the Son of God that suffered death? Is not the Son of God Lord? You want to say the Lord is the Father, but yet the Bible says the Father made his Son Lord. You don't want to accept the Son that's been made Lord. Now, back in the book of Luke, Let's see what the Son of Man said. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 26. The Son of Man said this. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory, so the son of man says that he's going to be ashamed of you if you ashamed of him when he shall come, when he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Now, he said he got his own glory, but he says that he's coming in his own glory. And then he said he's coming in his father's, meaning in his father's glory. So the son of man is coming in his own glory, according to his own words. Are you ashamed of Jesus words? He said that if you are ashamed of me and my words of him, shall the son of man be ashamed when he come in his own glory and in his father's. So the son of man said he's coming. And that gives clarity on what 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 um, is talking about. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse um, 
Let me see. Verse 9 and 10. For they themselves show of us what manner of inner end we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So the Bible says that we are waiting for his Son, God's Son, from heaven which means the sun got to be coming from heaven. If we waiting on him from heaven, that means he's there in heaven. Whom he raised from the dead. So God raised his son from the dead. And his son delivered us from the rat to come. Now we're going to talk about that rat to come. Now, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 3, it says in verse number 20, it says, and matter of fact, it started 19. Repent ye therefore. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. He shall send. Talking about in the refreshing. In those times of refreshing that shall come from the presence of the Lord, he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. He going to send Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? That's the one that was born from Mary, the son of man, the son of God. Now, can I show you who's going to be judging? Now, I want to go to the actual words of the Son of God, the Son of Man. I want to see what the Son of Man says about the judging. Matthew chapter 25. Let's look at verse 31. Matthew 25, verse 31. The Son of Man says... When the Son of Man, he's speaking of a future event. He says, when the Son of Man shall come. So the Son of Man is coming because he said the Son of Man shall come. So when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Remember how I read to you how he's coming in his own glory and the Father's? Now he says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he. Who is he? The son of man. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him and before him and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. So before him is going to be gathered all nations. Before the Son of Man is going to be gathered all nations and the Son of Man is going to separate them as a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on his left. Then shall the king. Now he references himself as being king. Then shall the king say unto them on his right, Come ye blessed of my father. So how is this the father when he says, come ye blessed of my father? The father don't have a father. The son has a father. The son of man, the son of God has a father. Now he says, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Are you going to believe that? If you ashamed of him in his words, and this is his words, if you ashamed of his words, he's going to be ashamed of you before the Father. Do you want access denied? Now, Jesus Christ is going to be the one that's going to He's going to um, bring out God's wrath. Let's look at Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6. 
Let's read starting at verse number 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island will move out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that set it on the throne, comma, so it's a separation, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Hide us from the face of him that set it on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. <clears throat> For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So the Lamb has some wrath, and they trying to hide from the face of him that sit on the throne, comma, that's a separation, and from the wrath of the Lamb. And that brings clarity to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. Um, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 at verse number, um, starting at verse 7. And those scriptures say, all right, here we go. It says, And to you who are wrestled, who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. We read that not too long ago. He's coming with the angels. He says, When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. So the Lord Jesus is coming in flame and fire. Revelation 6 says they, the, the, those men were trying to hide from the face of him that sat on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Matthew 24, the Son of Man says at verse number 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other and also now when we talk about God judging God is still judging and God said in the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 31 because he had appointed as matter of fact started verse 30 and the times of this ignorance God winked at but now commanded all men everywhere to repent now God God now because he, talking about God, had appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. So God, he's going to judge the world as the Old Testament scripture says in Psalms. He's going to judge the world in righteousness. But the Bible says he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained. Whereof he had given assurance unto all men and that he had raised him from the dead. So the one that he raised from the dead, God gives assurance to all men because he's going to judge the man, judge men by that man who he ordained. And that's the one that he raised from the dead. So God is still judging by So God is still judging. But he's judging by that man. The son of man said in Matthew 25, all nations was going to be gathered unto him and he was going to separate them. And then you keep reading Matthew 25 from 31 to 46. You will see he's going to, you got the sheep going with him to the, the kingdom that was prepared for them. And then you got the goats that's going to be sent off to the lake of fire that's prepared for the devil and his angels. So when God, so when Jesus say he's judging, and then the Bible says that um, that he's judging by that man. Well, God is judging by that man. That man, understand that that's the son of God. 
the father and the son are one. All right. They are together. The father has a son. The son is his word. So God is still judging by his word in the father's word. We know that was made flesh and that's his son, Jesus Christ, the only begotten of the father. All right. Now, one more thing. Look at this. What you said. So that man, is he going to be the judge or the world going to be judged by him? Now, think about that. Is that man going to be the judge or is the world going to be judged by him? So if that man is going to be the word, I mean, if that man is going to be the judge, it's obviously that a judge judges people. So if the world is going to be judged by him, that means the world is being judged by a particular person. So it means the same thing. What you're trying to say or ask is confusing and you stirring up confusion. Is that man going to be the judge or is the world going to be judged by him? That's the same thing. The world got to be judged by someone and that someone have to judge someone. Now, when the Bible says that He's going to judge by that man whom he ordained. Let's get a little more clarity. Acts chapter 10, let's start reading at 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Now, <clears throat> we talking about the things that Jesus Christ did, the son of God. And this is then this here I'm going to read next is going to let you know who we talking about. Let's start over from the beginning. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hung, hanged on the tree. So we talking about the one they slew and hanged on the tree. We know they hung to Jesus Christ, the son of God. He says him talking about the one that was slew and hanged on the tree. Him, God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witness chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So there's no confusion who we talking about. He says, verse 42, and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God, that it is he which is ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. That means to be the judge of the living and the dead. So it was ordained. He was ordained of God to be the judge of the living and the dead. So with that being said, that's why this scripture I'm about to read next. It makes it so clear on who we talking about that you shouldn't be questioning scripture. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10 says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All right. So therefore, I mean, scripture, it speaks for itself. So I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that when the Bible said, when you say as well, is he going to be the judge or is he going to be or is he or is he going to judge by him? Well, what you trying to say is, well, God going to judge by the life of Jesus. But that's not what he's talking about. God is going to judge by him, meaning by that man, Christ Jesus, because he ordained him to be the judge of the quick and the dead. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may receive the things done in our body. All right. So when the son comes back, in reality, the father is coming because the son, the word of God, is the father's word. And they are one, as I said, and the word is in the bosom of the father. So the son is, is the one you're going to see. And that son is coming in his glory and in the father's glory. So you do have God coming back and the God that's coming back. We're going to see is 
God's word, the son of God. But when you see him who is in an express image of his person, you seeing the father coming back. I hope you understand. Repent. Believe in Jesus Christ, the son of God. Live for him. Get baptized in his name. Get your sins washed away. All right.